Who gives this woman to be married to this man? My wife, Kathy, and I. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is a holy estate commended by the Apostle Paul and is therefore one not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but rather reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of Almighty God. It is into this holy estate that these two people present now come to be joined. If any person can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him speak now, or hereafter and forever, hold his peace. <laughs> Welcome you all to the Carter Schweitzer wedding. And we're so happy that you could make it here today on this beautiful day in Florida. And uh, it is incumbent on every minister of the gospel uh, when performing this type of ceremony to offer a charge to the couple that are contemplating marriage. And the form of the charge is really left to the discretion of the minister. And so taking those liberties, I would like to take a few minutes and talk to Ryan and to Lindsay and just share some encouragement uh, from my almost 29 years of experience. Lindsay, uh, we have just known for a short time, uh, a few weeks ago, Lindsay came and visited our house, my wife and I, and uh, I must say, Lindsay, uh, to your parents, uh, to Gary and Kathy, that they have uh, invested a lot in you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, evident from your life, and not just your outward beauty, but, but inward as well, that uh, they are to be congratulated. And Ryan, uh, we go back for many years, and we have had a tremendous relationship with you and your family and have the greatest respect for uh, for George and Pauline, also known as Jeep and Paula. <laughs> and, uh, and we love them so very much, so we're happy to be here today. As I was thinking, uh, and Ryan and Lindsay and my wife and I met just yesterday back there, we sat on the couch and we talked, and uh, I guess Ryan is kind of like his father, because when you start talking to him, usually the conversation ends up on either motorcycles or cars. <laughs> and so I thought it might be appropriate, after talking to Ryan and reading a little bit, to maybe talk about three kinds of cars and three kinds of races. And the first one is, of course, many of you probably heard one of the most popular, is the stop car. The stock car race, of course, some of you have been out there to the Speedway, and I know Ryan spent his time there. Although they have it every Saturday night, I understand, at 7 o'clock. <laughs> you probably won't make it tonight. Is that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the stock car originally was an, a production vehicle, unmodified, and it came off the line, and it was designed for speed. And the second type of race that I thought about, which Ryan just told me yesterday, I had never known that this had existed, but it's something called drifting. <laughs> and uh, I guess the driver uh, of the car will hit the turns at high speed and will turn the wheel over compensating for the turn until the rear wheels lose traction. <laughs> And the car begins to spin, almost out of control. And then the driver will turn the wheel 180 degrees the other way, and the car begins to do this high-speed drifting. And the tires are spinning, and they're smoking, and I understand even flames can come out. <laughs> and the third kind of race I thought about, I read about, was the pure race car. The pure race car is a modified vehicle. It's been designed by engineers. And
and it's been it's been uh, scientifically engineered to for one purpose, and that is to win the race. And as I was thinking about these two coming here today, I thought, boy, I could just see Lindsay pulling up in her stock car. <laughs> she has a, a, a lot of factory design built right in. <laughs> and I could see her pull up, and then here comes this high-speed drifter <laughs> sliding into the parking lot. That's Ryan. But as I thought about the two personalities and the two families that represent them, I said, you know what? I think God could join them together and build a pure race car, something that could win the race. Now, let me tell you about winning the race, guys. It's not about starting. It's not even about speed. And it's not even about the show of those drifters. Winning the race is about finishing your course. It's about setting your mark for the finish line together as God joins you to do together today. And your mark is the finish line. Your mark is to cross that line at the end of your life when your hair is gray and, and time has painted you differently but you will still be joined together as God intended you to be. Amen. That's the race I want to mm -hmm. keep, you in, keep in mind. I was reading about a, I started thinking, what, what would be the greatest car race out there? And so I began to search. The greatest, is it the Indy 500? Maybe it's the Daytona. Uh, maybe the Monaco Grand Prix or some other race, great race. And then, I came across a race, Ryan, you've probably heard of it. It's called the Le Mans. It's a 24-hour event. It's not all about speed, and it's not all about show. The Le Mans is a race of endurance. And the purpose of the Le Mans is to prove the reliability of the drivers. See, they can have more than one driver in that race. They can take turns. And they can support each other until they finish their course. All right. <laughs> now, Ryan and Lindsay, uh, it's time now for you to state your intentions as to why you are here today. And so I want to ask you, Ryan, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance? in the holiest state of matrimony. Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only under her as long as you both shall live? I do. And Lindsay, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live? I do. Now, uh, before uh, Ryan and Lindsay exchange their vows, uh, I'd like to read a portion of scripture that was selected by the groom's mother, and it comes from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians in chapter 3, verses 12 to 16. And uh, I, I chose the message version, and I hope that's okay, because I want this to be uh, a prayer to, to Ryan and to Lindsay for them to take with them today. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, Dress in the wardrobe that God has picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the Master Jesus forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment, never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. 
and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God for all that he has done. Now we're going to get ready for the uh, exchange of the rings between the groom and the bride. And uh, the wedding ring is an ancient symbol of unity and unbroken love. And the wedding ring uh, can be traced back uh, as far back as the Egyptians. They would pull the reeds out of the Nile River and wrap them around their finger of those that were to be married. And then the Romans developed the, the, the pure metal rings. And one of the things that the Romans believed is why we wear our ring on this fourth finger is because they believed that there was a vein that, that, that could be traced from that finger all the way back to the human heart. And that, that, that vein was called vena amoris, or the vein of love. And so as Ryan and, and Lindsay get ready to exchange these rings, um, I want you to just keep that, keep that thought in mind. Do we have the, do we have Lindsay's ring? All right. As a pledge, as a pledge, and in token, and in token of the vows between us made, of the vows between us made, with this ring, with this ring, I be wed, I be wed.
No more to be two, Lord, but to be one flesh, one mind, one spirit, Lord. I ask that you would bless them in the days ahead, that you would be their comforter, be their guide. Lord, help them in this world where we need you so much. Be a constant friend to them, Lord. We rejoice with these families, Lord, at this blessed event. And now, what God has joined together, let no man split apart. And for as much as Ryan and Lindsay have exchanged these vows and consented together in holy wedlock and exchanged their promises and signified it with the giving and receiving of these rings, by the power invested in me by God Almighty in the great state of Florida, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife. which is just a couple minutes away. And um, so I think that's, that's all I needed to announce. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you can just, uh, just be dismissed by the front row for...